the game changer would be if Vladimir Putin unleashed a nuke, because that then, I think, takes all of this to the next level. So at this point, you're saying you don't believe that it's certain that he is Gog. Well, he's Gog-esque, without a doubt. He yeah. He's acting like Gog. He's he's aggressive. He's evil. Um, he surely hates Israel. He surely wants what he can take from Israel. Um, he's aging. How much? How many years does he have? Left? Maybe he's got another 15 years left. He very, he very well may. Um, but I think we're so late in the game. I think we should keep our eyes on him and what would be his intent towards... Uh, let's just say wanting to seize a spoil, which is wealth, right. in Israel. And Israel has wealth, and I think he would like it. I- I'm suspicious that, that he could be Gog. I- I'm going to leave it there because it is speculation. Is the wind of war blowing between Russia and Ukraine the beginning of the Gog and Magog war? Wouldn't the involvement of America and Europe turn this into a third world war? And in general, did we pursue Gog and Magog, or should we fear it, a war in which all the nations will converge on Jerusalem? and half the population will go into exile. This question was posed to Pastor Jack Hibbs, Jan Markle and Jimmy Evans, who have the influence and wisdom to answer this issue. They say that as we see it, Gog and Magog were not necessarily so, and certainly not in the way the prophets prophesied. We have a rule that prophecies of disaster do not necessarily come true. That is why the prophecy about the exile in Egypt lasting 400 years did not come true due to severe oppression. Hashem calculated the exile from the birth of Isaac, and so we leave Egypt 210 years after entering it. Well, naturally, with what's going on in the world around us, Russia, Russia, not Soviet Union anymore, mind you. Listen, this is an epic moment. If you can hear me right now, you are actually living out a prophetic timeline. How do I know? Because for so many years, some, what, 80 years or so, there was the Soviet Union where communism ensconced many nations and its epicenter was Moscow, Russia, Moscova, uh, the Muscovite, ancient Mus- Muscovite kingdom. Um, and that was the epicenter. And then remember, President Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And through tactics that Ronald Reagan employed from that moment forward, uh, military economic tactics, uh, the Soviet Union broke up and dissolved. That had to happen because the Bible doesn't talk about a Soviet Union. The Bible talks about the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. What is that? Today's Russia. Today's Russia. And Gog, G-O-G, is the name of a or title of a person who is both the military commander, calls the shots, and the political leader, who calls the shots, all wrapped up in one person. I'm not saying it's Vladimir Putin, could be, but it's going to be someone that fits the bill, G-O-G, Gog, that is in the land of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, or Russia. But listen, here's what's amazing. That shouldn't shock you. Kingdoms come and go. The, the, the main thing that you understand is Russia is in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 38. The Gog prophecy is meant to be fulfilled at the approach of what is called the end of days, but not necessarily the end of the world. Jewish eschatology viewed Gog and Magog as enemies to be defeated by the Messiah, which would usher in the age of the Messiah. One view within Christianity is more starkly apocalyptic. Making Gog and Magog, here indicating nations rather than individuals, allies of Satan against God at the end of the millennium, as described in the book of Revelation. A legend was attached to Gog and Magog by the time of the Roman period, that the gates of Alexander were erected by Alexander the Great to repel the tribe. Romanized Jewish historian Josephus knew them as the nation descended from Magog the Japhetite, as in Genesis, and explained them to be the Scythians. In the hands of early Christian writers they became apocalyptic hordes. Throughout the Middle Ages, they were variously identified as the Vikings, Huns, Khazars, Mongols, or other nomads, or even the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. And so let's, let's talk about, let's begin with Russia and the Ukraine, because this is a very significant thing. Some people saying that this is the beginning of World War III. So what do you think about that? 
Oh, and 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 maybe it is, but but my take on it is that any conflict that doesn't directly deal with Israel or indicate that it's going to ultimately end up in Israel, which of course Putin could end up uh, being Gog, and and you know that's kind of for a little bit later. But if it doesn't involve the Middle East, I don't get real concerned about it. I am concerned for those that are suffering, and particularly in Ukraine. Um, but I think the question, Jimmy, is, is Vladimir Putin going to continue this aggression and continue the aggression and, and not just keep moving and try to take, say, the Baltics and some of those countries, but is he going to set his sights on the mountains of Israel? Does he want the natural gas in Israel? Does he want their high technology? And we don't have an answer to that. He certainly could. But I say until a leader puts their eyes on what they intend to do to Israel uh, by way of harm, by way of invasion, I just think that it's more wars and rumors of wars. Now, here's the game changer. The game changer would be if Vladimir Putin unleashed a nuke, because that then, right. I think, takes all of this to a, the next level. And, of course, he, he could. He's threatened to do that. And he's threatening good. it. That is and right. So at this point, you're saying you don't believe that it's certain that he is Gog. Well, he's Gog-esque, without a doubt. He yeah. he's acting like Gog. He's he's aggressive. He's evil. Um, he surely hates Israel. He surely wants what he can take from Israel. Um, he's aging. How much? How many years does he have? Left? Maybe he's got another fifteen years left. He very he very well may. Um, but I think we're so late in the game. I think we should keep our eyes on him and what would be his intent towards. Uh, let's just say wanting to seize a spoil, which is wealth, right. in Israel. And Israel has wealth, and I think he would like it. So if you start to see him, and he's, he's <laughs> I, I'm suspicious that, that he could be Gog. I, I'm going to leave it there because it is speculation. The speaker believes that the convergence of global events, particularly Russia's actions in Ukraine, may indicate the beginning of World War III, but unless a conflict directly involves Israel, it is not a major concern, although the use of nuclear weapons by Vladimir Putin would be a game-changer. Collapse the convergence of global events. Particularly Russia's actions in Ukraine may indicate the beginning of World War III, but the speaker believes that unless a conflict directly involves Israel, it is not a major concern, although the use of nuclear weapons by Vladimir Putin would be a game-changer. He believes that the person being discussed is acting like Gog. Is aggressive, hates Israel, and wants to seize wealth from Israel, and while it is speculation, he thinks it is worth keeping an eye on him. Russia is strengthening its alliance with Iran, a country known for its nuclear program and defiance of the international community, and it is uncertain where they currently stand in terms of obtaining a nuclear weapon. Dumping the nuclear deal with Iran was the right move as it allowed them nuclear capability and the ability to hit Europe and America, while also rewarding them with billions of dollars, which is a strong delusion and utter insanity in the end times. Because like Russia, uh, like Persia, Iran, and like Babylon, Baghdad, these nations are key players in the end times. What's amazing to me is, is that it appears America evaporates for this one leader to come upon the scenes that is going to get a nation uh, coalesced around him and he's going to attack Israel. We're not talking about the Antichrist. We're talking about a coming military excursion by the leader of Russia. He's going to get surrounding Muslim nations to join with them to go after Israel's success. And that's in the Bible. They must understand that the world was not created by itself. That man was created in the image of God and not of the ape. That we are all the handiwork of Hashem and should all unite as one, not fight and shed blood. And all that was made will fear you. And all created will bow to you and all will unite as one to do your will with a whole heart. We also pray and hope and yearn that we will live to see, reign upon the whole world in your honor, and rise upon the land in your glory, and appear in the splendor of your majestic might over all who dwell upon your earth. And everything that has been made will know that you have made it, and all that was formed will understand you have formed it, and everyone who is breath in him will say, Hashem, God of Israel is king, and his kingdom rules over all. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.